<laughs> Good morning. So how, how you guys can uh, promote more uh, transition, tempo, and rhythm for the game coming up? I think we did a good job of it in game two, and we just have to uh, get off to a good start. Game three is going to be uh, a pretty hostile environment. They're going to come out fighting, um, playing really aggressive. You can expect that. And we just got to be ready for any and everything and try to, you know, get off, like I said, get off to a good start, give ourselves a lot of momentum early. All NBA teams, you and Kevin on second, Draymond on third. Um, we obviously appreciate uh, that positioning. Um, knowing a lot of guys had great years this year, and you can go down the list and talk about each one individually. So um, it is nice to be you know, recognized in some way, shape, or form. Um, obviously, we have bigger fish to fry. We're trying to win a championship, and you could obviously shout out Clay in his season. Um, Definitely deserve to be on, on that on one of those teams. Uh, I know it's obviously a tough vote every year to figure out, you know, who goes where. But uh, that's a guy that you know played a, had an amazing season. Uh, he was very consistent all year long. So uh, definitely deserve to be on that spot. You think in terms of those teams? Clay doesn't really get enough credit for his defense, even though he has not been shooting well in the series. I mean, he's been doing a pretty. We understand what Clay brings, and if uh, if it's unheralded, if or whatnot, or if, you know people don't notice it, or, or what we we appreciate what he brings to the to the floor every single night, and we'll be the ones to praise him and to uh, to lift him up if if need be, because. Uh, he deserves that recognition for, like you said, his impact on both ends of the floor. You can fall in love with his jumper. You can fall in love with, you know, 70 or 60 points in three quarters or whatever. But, um, you know, he does bring an all-around game that uh, is impressive and something he's, uh, I know he takes pride in. It's uh He's had some really big games on the road. I mean, obviously, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City last year, but he's had some big games in San Antonio. I mean, you, you shoot at home, shoot on the road. I mean, there is a difference, I would imagine. Uh, why is he such a good shooter on the road? What type of mentality do you have to have to be a good shooter on the road? I mean, it's confidence, but really, you don't think about nothing, really. Like, uh, you expect to make shots. You expect to... Uh, to shoot well no matter what zip code you're in. Like, that's what shooters, you know, that's how we think. And when you, it, it, the only difference is, is just the, uh, the noise after a shot goes in, whether it's, a, you know, 18,000 fans screaming or if it's dead silent. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. You shoot the same shots, you have the same aggression. Um, but you don't really think about the difference really at all because when you have the ball in your hands, that's that's what we that's what we love. No arena where you say I'll just really shoot, hate shooting here. There are some, and I'm still trying to figure out how to explain it. Like there's depth perception situations. There's uh, lighting. Uh, rims are softer in certain cities. The humidity and how the ball feels in certain cities. I love shooting in Miami because it's like sticky because of the humidity down there. Like, um, you have a better feel for the ball. The opposite of that is like playing in Chicago when we go in like, you know, December, January, February months and it's freezing cold and the balls never really warm up. That's kind of tough to get used to. That's, that's the little things you kind of notice. Right. But at the end of the day, when you get in that moment and you have the ball in your hand, I'm not thinking about none of that. And I'm sure Clay isn't either or any great shooter isn't. It's just shoot the ball. Steph, I read in a book recently where Clay's performance in Game Six meant something to you, but you kind of said, "Go, go, do it for a little while." That was a good book, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> it was a good book. It's it's all right. Right. I heard it was it was it was, it was golden, right? It was yeah, golden. the miraculous rise. Said. That was yeah, said. that's what's yeah, up, it man. We need some money now, but just saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to bet, Don? <laughs>
Uh, okay, respect. Written by Marcus Thomas. It's a great oh book, man. Goodness. Great book. Jeez. Great book. Wow. I should, Shut up. should withdraw the question. Out. Did, did that did that game, did Clay's performance in that game kind of change, not change, but elevate him in your mind? Like, okay, now he could go do it on the biggest stage. I always had confidence that from like 2013 when we played in San Antonio, Game one, we had a, obviously, uh, nobody knows the story, we had a great big lead. I played well in game one, we ended up losing that lead, and Manu hits a three to win the game. We come back game two, and Clay was just gunslinging. It was, it was unbelievable, um, the way that he impacted that game, shooting the ball and having a huge night. Um, so we knew he was capable of it, even from early in his career. And anytime you can play well on the biggest stage, it just is it's amplified you know, ten, tenfold for everybody who's watching it and can feel that moment. So it didn't prove anything to us. Obviously, we appreciated the, the, the effort, and that was something that was truly special. But we expected him to know he has that in him at any point. Do you remember anything special about that game, a moment when you went, man, Clay's got it going? Uh, probably... I think the beginning of the fourth quarter, he hit one at the top of the key from about five or six feet beyond the three-point line, and his feet were like facing our bench, and he just, you know, just shot it. And that's when those kind of heat check ones, um, you know, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something special. So what's your thoughts on the, uh, the uh, regular season awards being presented in the show at the end of the whole NBA season? I have mixed feelings about it, honestly, because um, having come uh, celebrate my MVP the last two years with the traditional, uh, the traditional way, I guess you'd call it, I really enjoy just being at home and celebrating that moment with the people that helped me get to that place, my teammates, coaching staff, the fans, that next home game, um, the staff, everybody that's a part of the organization gets to feel and enjoy that moment. And so that is that is a special thing. Um, and whoever wins it this year isn't gonna be able to do it right away in, you know, in front of their fans and enjoy that. So that's the only part that I have kind of mixed emotions about having to wait so long to, uh, to understand or to hear who won. And um, it'll just be a different way to kind of celebrate that moment for that, that whoever that, that person is. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a great show. I'm sure it's going to be fun for fans and, and uh, everybody to kind of look back at the season as a whole at, at one time. But, uh, you know, for the defensive player of the year, sixth man of the year, MVP, those moments that you have on the floor, fans going crazy. Like I said, you get to enjoy it with the people that helped you get there. That's a special moment that, uh, um, you know, for, if you had to get to the wait so long, it's kind of it's kind of different. Steph, uh, Zaza has said over the course of this season he's developed a thicker skin and let things kind of roll off his back after taking so much scrutiny at the beginning of the year from fans. And do you, have you have you seen that? Does that better prepare him for maybe the kind of treatment he could face uh, Saturday? Zaza's got a thick skull, so I know when he uh, when he gets out there. It, it, He's gonna be able to play, um, and I know guys in the locker room have told him like block out all as best you can. Obviously, block out as much of this noise as possible because it doesn't matter. Um, we know what kind of person you are. Um, you don't have to you know, be apologetic for Kawhi about what happened, but you don't have to apologize for your intent on, on how you're you know, guarding that play, whatever you want to call it. So moving on, just you know, he's gonna be uh, he'll be ready. He'll be same Zaza confident, and that's what we expect. And he knows that we have his back, um, and hopefully that, that'll go a long way. Are you one of the guys who said it to him? Yeah, I talked to him. Okay. Um, just like I, you know, I, I don't think he needed to hear it, but just knowing that we all, you know, have his back is, I think, you know, huge. At this, especially at this juncture, with the the spotlight and the microscope that everybody's under. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for so much. Yeah. I did too. <laughs>